On this episode of The Layover Live, Tracy and Josette stop by to talk SEO and content. Great, I finally talk about how super important SEO is. You mean how super important content is? Uh, SEO is a little more important. Content is more important. SEO. Hey, la la ladies, ladies, before we fight, can't we just work together? Welcome to episode 71 of The Layover Live, where we bring you the top article from The Layover each week. I'm Jason Swick, VP of Digital Marketing, and I'm joined by two guests today. We've got Josette here, who's on the content editing side of things. We've got Tracy Legault here, who's on the SEO side of things. No battle today. We're going to talk about how we can align you guys for success and get you guys to work together. So we're jokingly talking about those things. However, SEO and content working together is extremely important. So the article of the week comes out of Search Engine Land. It's a really good article. It talks about aligning content and SEO for search success, which is really, really important. It's something you should be thinking about all the time regardless. Because one thing is for certain, if you want to get more organic traffic to your website, you need great content. So Tracy, I'm going to start with you on this one and, and talk about um, you know, because it's a really good place to start, right? But we'll start on the SEO side. But how, you know, really starting to talk about how uh, can SEO help in the content planning process? Because as we're starting to do this, oftentimes this is when we should be thinking about search engine optimizations when we're start, first starting to think about that content. So maybe talk a little bit about how SEO can help in that content planning sure. process. Well, SEO really should come in at the very beginning of planning mm -hmm. uh, as part of the brainstorming process with the content team. Uh, because we can help with uh, keyword research, helping mm -hmm. you identify topics. So a lot of times it's, you know, the content team or who the stakeholders will have the topics they want to discuss and SEO can come in and say, great, these are the phrases people are using, here's what they're looking at. We can do competitor analysis to help us identify who's performing well and how and why, and then SEO can continue in that conversation. So it's really important to be involved as much as possible with those conversations. Yeah, yeah, it makes it makes a good point. And since the vast majority of traffic to a DMO's website and destination marketing site comes from organic traffic, it's yeah. good to talk about those things. You know, one thing you touched on was uh, the looking at competitors, right? Yeah. That's really, really mm -hmm. important part. So Josette, a question for you then uh, is maybe in what ways does competitor analysis really influence the content strategy when you're thinking about those things? Okay, it's um, when you're starting out with um, your SEO analysts or sitemap analysts um, list of keywords, you see the average monthly searches, you see what the phrases are, um, but you may not have a way to prioritize them. One way to do that is through the competitor analysis, and there are various tools that you can use. Um, we use SEMrush, and this is a way to understand that organic search traffic and what competition is out there. So what a lot of these tools will do is um, compare your site to other sites that um, share keywords, essentially, that you're um, ranking for the same keywords and the differentiation between your rank for, for different keywords. So this um, sets helps you set some goals mm -hmm. and decide which um, content you want to create or improve in order to rank better for those terms. Yeah, really good stuff. And that, that competitor, mm -hmm. look at that landscape, whether it's on the SEO or content side, something that really happens oftentimes in the beginning of the process. But sometimes we can't have the SEO person in the beginning of the process for whatever reasons, right? It could be timing, it could be various restrictions. So if we can't do that in the planning process, then Tracy, like when should we bring in the SEO team? Yeah, that's a great question. A lot of people, for various reasons, can't have SEO involved in the planning process. So it's really important to bring in your SEO person as soon as you can, preferably before the content's been written because it makes it easier for the content team or the writer to incorporate the phrases in a natural way in the content. So the sooner you can get somebody in, uh, your SEO in, they can come back and you can say, here's our themes, here's the titles of our projects that we're working on. We can go and gather the keywords you need, the phrases, some maybe related phrases that maybe you haven't thought about, and return all that, as well as then also be involved in the process of making sure that page is optimized with links and image alt tags and everything before it even pushes live so you don't have to come backwards and right. do it. So bottom line is you can't bring them in in the beginning. You need to bring them in as soon as absolutely yeah. possible, right? I, I could not agree with you more on that. Yeah. But we're, and if we're talking about search and we're talking about search engine optimization, we're definitely talking about intent. 
right? Um, so Josette, what's what's you know what's the benefit of really understanding the audience's intent when deciding which keywords then that we want to target in in terms of content? Um, and this is where content creation and strategy um, really aligns with SEO mm -hmm. and with um, setting goals. So one thing that both SEO and content teams will will do um, is sit down with clients and talk about what their goals are for the site, and kind of all the way down into um, the customer path of purchase that might be. Um, an email newsletter sign up or bookings, um, but you know not all search terms are going to be all the way down that all the way down the funnel that way. So it's it's important to know the intent um, behind a search term. So someone might search for an attraction, say Six Flags, and that could mean anything from just information from directions to what kind of rides are there to tickets to itineraries. Right. So it's really um, pulling apart and finding those long tail keywords. Um, that can help you build a content strategy around it. And that helps you um, really woo the customer all the way to the action that you want them to perform on your site. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really good advice from both of you. So bottom line is, regardless of what we're doing, SEO and content need to be working together. Oftentimes using the same KPIs to measure success is important in that step of the process. But the sooner you can get those two teams working together, the better off you're going to be. So Josette, Tracy, thanks for stopping by today. Each and every week, thank you for tuning in. If you're not subscribed to our channel, please do so now. We would love to hear from you as well. So please leave your comments below. Thank you guys and have a great day.